Uh, February 13, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, meeting minutes from January 30th. Motion to accept. Uh, second. Okay, all those in favor, we're done. Aye. Aye. Uh, comments not on the agenda? Paul. Yeah, uh, I just wondered if um, maybe this isn't the right place to do this, but I'd like to make a, a Pete Westover and I would like to put an item on the agenda for March 13th meeting uh, about uh, updating the trail system uh, initiative that's in the open space plan of years ago. We'd like to bring that back to life and see if we can't do something about laying it out in more detail and going forward with the idea of having a trail system. Um, I do know that the CPC has the same interest. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they spoke with me about that in my capacity as a rec, as the rec person, not too long ago. Okay. Um, so I don't think you, you and Peter alone. Good. In, in that, in that thinking, um, as you know, getting from concept to action is always a little tougher sometimes. Well, maybe I should talk to Al. Well, yeah. I mean, we we got it, but there's. They want money. They they want to. They, we want to put money into it. Yeah. Good. Um, so it's not just. But so it, it might take a little bit of time. But I think that's where we're going with this as well. Um, I would encourage you to talk with Brian. I don't know whether the March 13 meeting is is the best one or. or but we'll figure that out. Okay. Okay. Because I think that's. I mean, I think that it should be all over. East, West, North, South, Whaley, and working with other towns to make them regional trails as opposed to sure. trails that stop at the, the, the town line. Right. So, Good. okay. Um, anything else? Uh, Verizon, petition for placement of a joint utility pole on Poplar Hill Road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, for the record, my name is Paul Davis. I work for a company by the name of UC Synergetic right over here in Sunderland. We're a contract engineering company and we do work for Verizon and I'm representing them on their behalf tonight. Would you mind like coming like, step in the front row? Because sure. it's a little easier to see you yep. up there. And... Right. So I'll pull the team petition tonight is joint own pole T 102 and a half and E one and a half on the westerly side of Poplar Hill Road at a point approximately 155 feet northerly from the center line of Conway Road. That's the location. The reasoning for the pole, Eversource requested this pole for two reasons that I was told. Um, first reason, um, well actually three. The span currently is about 260 feet from existing pole 102 and existing pole 103. So as you see on your petition plan, 102 and a half is in the middle. So they were looking for a mid-span pole so that they could cut down on the span one two, so that they could place new equipment on this proposed pole, and three, from the way it was described to me, <clears throat> the pole would serve as a serving pole or a service pole to the address across the street, which I believe is number four Poplar Hill Road. So other than that, that's basically how it was described to me <clears throat> and the reasonings for the pole. Where does Fort Poplar Hill Road get service from today? I do not know that, to be honest with you. One of the other poles, probably? I believe so. It's probably either 102 or 103, one of the two. Can I ask a question? Um, sure. Looking at the Google map here, um, and it's hard to know the one one correspondence, but it looks like you might have to take out some trees to do that. Uh, so can you comment on what, if any, trees would need to be removed or trimmed? Yes, um, I wasn't told about any tree trimming. Any tree trimming involved in this particular uh, petition would be done by Eversource since they are requesting the pole. 
So to be honest with you, I don't know if there's any tree trimming involved. You'd have to, you'd have to talk to Eversource about that. Well, I'd like to know that before approving the right. oh. So, like I said, I don't really know that. You'd have to talk to Eversource about that. Because no, no tree trimming was explained to me in regards to the petition. But would you go on 18 seconds, okay? Yeah. Um, as the person who's going to put up the pool, or the company who's going to put up the pool, if you guys got there, and, and just to follow Joyce's question, if I'm understanding you right, if, if, if you don't know anything about tree removal or tree trim, and you got there and you said, we can't put up these bowls because these trees are here, what would you do? Well, I, we don't put up the poles. We do the design work for it. Okay, but the design work would include, we can't do this, the trees are here, right? Or no? What am I missing? Well, what I'm missing is that no one, the person that handed me the petition to do tonight yeah. did not mention anything about tree trimming. So to answer your question, I don't really know. I haven't been to the site. I haven't looked at it myself. I didn't do the job myself. What I explained to you previously is what I know. In regards to tree trimming, I don't know. Eversource would do the tree trimming. So again, since they would be doing the tree trimming, if there was any to be done, which I don't know, you would have to talk to Eversource about that. And they're not here, obviously, so. Well, yeah, I, I got a notice through a butter since I'm it's going to be on my, not my property, but it's going to be on my, it's on the town's property technically, but yeah. it's my land. That's your point. And uh, there is a pole, 102, I believe, that services uh, number four Poplar Hill Road, Fletcher residence uh, already. And there is a new pole next to number four on a driveway called number six Poplar Hill Road that belongs to Peter Mahar. And there's underground cable from this pole all the way up the hill to his house. But there is no service from the other side of the street to that pole. But I called Al Bissett at Verizon, and he told me they're going to be putting service to number six, to the new pole that's there. It already has the underground conduit coming up to about six feet. And the cable's already run, I think up to number six up on the hill. So they're gonna make that connection. Um, and they're saying put another pole about uh, 60 or so feet south of pole number 102 or number three, whichever one it was, which has a clear shot at number six's pole. I don't know why they're not using number six, uh, why number six isn't using the existing pole, because the site I saw means they have to, they put a pole Near, fairly near the other pole, and then, I mean, the existing live pole on the west side of Poplar Hill, and then they're going to have to run the, the service through a tree to get to the new pole. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I think this is an ill-conceived plan. They, somebody hasn't, somebody's been there because they put stakes <coughs> in the ground, but I don't think they've thought this through. If if the intention, as Alba said, said, was to serve number six. Um, and number four already has service, so I don't know why they would redo their service. So I'm confused. The only thing, that, um, as I'm piecing things together, I'm wondering is, are they going to take the service off of the pole that is presently feeding number four Fletcher's and move that south to the new pole? and then still then take the pole, the existing pole, then go across to Pete Maher? Yeah, I um, don't know. That's, um, there's, there's some pieces missing that's not, but the other issue that I have is we have a large drainage pipe coming right down the edge of the road right where the stakes are. So I can't approve it until I know that it's not going to, um, and it's not a small pipe, it's pretty, it's a big pipe. Yeah. And I can't, without digging it up to get the exact location, or, you know, within, within inches to tell you whether the pole would go right straight down through it or whether they could punt, 
potentially move it one way or the other and still leave it there. So I, I really think we're at the point where we need more information from Eversource before much more can be done. Second that. They don't, they don't show them, well they show the location of the hoop ball, but it's from the center line of, of Conway Road. It, it must, it, it appears yeah, to be half, down, the, the halfway in between the two existing, right? Yes. So that's roughly going to be up 180, 200 feet. Is that normal what their poles are? 10, 70 yards is typical. Pardon? 70 yards is typical separation between poles. Okay, well that's that's what the existing ones are. So what what one in between? Well, the, the span is about 260 feet. The, the standard. Well, this you don't show us that, like that. It looks like it's 150, maybe 200. I got 169. Right, because there's 91 there. Yeah. That's, they look about the same yeah, distance. Right, so. um, I got 169 feet from existing pole 102 well, okay. and 91 feet from existing pole 103. That's not what the drawing shows. It's showing what? 159 from the center line of the road. Right. Nine, right. Nine, they got the 91 feet from pole from pole well yeah 103. from pole 103 to the to the proposed pole correct yeah. right right yeah but going the other way from the new pole south exactly south. so the 155 really is inaccurate correct right <clears throat> so i sound i tend to agree that we we need better information we need to know what are you going to do about trees and what are you going to do about making sure we don't damage the drainage pipe underneath. I think we need, we, I, I would not be comfortable approving this until those, at least those two issues of settlement. It would be nice to have some clarity about why this poll is needed if Fort Poplar Hill Road already has service. Right, and, and there's a conduit, a dead and, conduit. And yeah, if there's an underground conduit that's already there, why can't we just right. Right. push through there? Are you, you from the BPW, right? Yes. Would it, would it make sense to have the two engineers that have already gone out to stake this, these locations to meet with you? Yes. In the field? Yes. So that's what I will relay back to the person that I work with. I'll have that person contact Eversource, the original engineer that went out to take a look at this, and they can all meet out in the field and re-look at this and, and get it right the second time. Is it, is it who would control the existing line that's dead right now? Would that be Verizon or would that be Eversource? I don't know whose line it is. Paul, do you know why it's there? The existing which the conduit you mentioned, which, which was dead. I didn't know there was one. I thought you said there was. There's an under, the underground conduit's not dead. You know, the underground, underground conduit's brand new. It needs to be hooked up that's to the pole across the street. To a pole across the street where the service currently right. is. And who and who put that in? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. Do you have to know what roughly where it is on the map? Yeah, I know exactly where. It is. It's right at the beginning of the new driveway, which may not be on. So this is there, but um, if you go over to this is the way the assessors maps here, uh, or if you can get the group. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, this is so, uh, number, the, that says 14, that's 4 Poplar Hill Road. 14 is 4 Poplar Hill Road. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, there's a driveway uh, butting uh -huh. this uh, borderline. Uh -huh. And it's right there. Uh -huh. It's right across the street from this pole. And the, and the underground conduit goes from where to where? From this uh, pole here all the way up to here. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So there's another property over there. Yeah, there's another so property over there. And it's and it's all under the house. So, so presumably, the person up there might actually know when it was built. The person, person up there is the building. It's a new car. It's currently building. Oh, so they requested. It's in the process. They requested. Yeah. Okay. So they're trying to find a way to hook up uh, that underground conduit to one of these. To the service is on this the the west side. West side. Of and they're trying to get. So they want to connect to a new pole here. They don't want to connect to this pole. Yeah, this pole is now serving for 
the corner of the house is right out there. Yeah. And there are no trees in the way there. There are no trees in the way here, the new pole. And this well, is a proposed is, pole, yeah. which would have to go through trees to get over here. And there's somehow there's a pole over here, too? Or that, that's a new enough? pole that has the, the conduit. The underground oh, okay. conduit comes up about six feet up that pole and stops. And it's waiting to be connected. Oh, to so the there's a, another pole that's not even there's drawn on There's a brand new pole. Or is it that pole right here? Is that the one it must be that pole right there. Well, if it's that one, it's not in the right place. Well, that's not a surprise. And so maybe, maybe this yeah. isn't the scale, but right. there, there is a pole that's very close to being across from this pole. So this pole would have to go through some tree limbs to get to service, which is the idea here. Yeah. Can I make a I, I think your idea is a good one to have to sit down with the two engineers and Keith, but I'm going to suggest that when this gets rescheduled, Brian, yeah. that who's ever in that meeting, might it might make sense to have them here as well, so we're not asking questions that people that may be here just don't have the answer to. And it would really help if the maps were a little more yeah, I agree. Um, because I don't know, maybe maybe they're not used to people who actually look at the maps, but we do. This so, is our thing. So, yeah. can, can like, comment on the extent of tree removal if that needs to be done, and, and whether it's necessary so, considering all the new yeah. stuff that's already there. I mean, yeah. yeah. So if we're going to continue this, this is a public hearing. So why don't we continue it to a, okay. a um, time, place, and date certain? Um, do you think two weeks is a reasonable time period? We be able to meet up, do you think? Sure. I would say okay. so. Yep. Then I move we continue this to our next meeting. Um, our next meeting was probably 27th. February 27th. Six o'clock. Six yeah. o'clock. Do you want to have it be at the start of the meeting? Yeah. And then we'll be. Second. Okay. Yeah. I guess we have a unanimous. Yeah. We're going to move on it and continue this. Thanks, yes. you guys. I appreciate it. And Paul, thank you for your input. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we are on our way to have a conversation, near as I can figure. I lost my agenda. <laughs> How about so, my agenda? You don't have to hear agenda. Oh, no, here it is. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, all right, Sue, you're here to bother us again? Yeah. I think have a new packet for Bob. Yeah. Yeah, the first half was in one of his Yeah. If I could, if I could just take uh, two minutes um, before we consider Sue's application. Um, we talked at the last meeting that I was going to revise the application, revise the rules and regulations, um, yeah. which I had which I have done and provided you yeah. with the changes um, that were proposed. Most of it is updating of the rules and regulations. It's rewording some things. There's not <coughs> too many um, really major changes here. Um, I mean, the new section eight it is updated um, because in the past it was you had to purchase alcohol from a licensed wholesaler. And now it's licensed wholesaler, um, farm brewery, farm winery. It's just been updated to reflect those changes. And then the proposed new section nine just talks about, makes it explicit that the board has a right to condition these types of special one licenses. In terms of the application, it was really just updating the address. And yeah, and then there was a lot of formatting on that first page. Yes. Yeah. So ideally, if, if the board was so willing, it would approve those changes first before um, we fully consider the application, so it's application. If you don't mind the that procedural, is, right? <laughs> if you don't mind the procedural. Uh, no. um, okay. so what page do you want to go? I'm sorry. Okay. What's further in your package makes the changes? Oh. Right now, sir. Right now. Oh, I see. Okay, I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Couple pages. Yeah. Couple pages after that. Yes. So and that, like some things are just being like it's a bullet list instead of a bunch of check boxes. I don't see how that's
line of formatting changes on the first page. Yeah. Brian, these rules, the, the, using the present situation as the example, yep. as I read these rules, it's about purchasing. And no one's going to be purchasing. Where's that? Remember, all will all come for the event. Um, they free. may, right? They may. Yes. They're, they get one free, uh, one free beer when they at, for as a runner. But like, if they have a spouse that would like to, they would buy. Right. So I guess my question would be: Shouldn't this also include, for lack of a better word, giveaways? Because this is just about purchase. And it says purchase by the licensee. Right. And is that so we well are you purchasing the beer or are they That's their sponsorship. That's their sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So they're not so there's no purchase there. So I'm just wondering whether it needs to be expanded a little bit to to include um, donations, that kind of thing. Which which one which section? I'm looking at eight. 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 Uh, yeah, short the I, we could change the language that to just to be inclusive. Yeah. We, we could yeah. we could change that to obtain. And that um, doesn't. Um, it also doesn't. If everything has to be purchased by the licensee, the individuals attending, do they? How are they covered there? Uh, I mean, how are they included? Would they have to also purchase from? No, they'll purchase from the. Um, well, in this case, right. That I, I don't have any problem with, yeah. with them you know, making that purchase, but this doesn't forbid them from making a purchase. It just says all alcohol for the event must be purchased or obtained if we change that word by the licensee from an authorized supplier. Yeah. Um, is it sort of not really an issue about other people at the event being able to also purchase alcohol from the licensed? Authorized supplier with the updated wording to include farm breweries. So, so Joyce, are you yeah. suggesting that we would include that language as well? Just to yeah, not, no, I was mostly curious as to whether it doesn't have to be addressed at all. But I, see, I, I think it should because in in 20 years, when right. future select boards are here, people are going to say, "Well, it what was the like intent?" All alcohol for the event must be purchased by the licensee. It does. It seems like it excludes individuals right. who are attending the event. What, what does the CMR seven reference? But the CMR seven reference might. So that says. So in terms of authorized suppliers, so that would in this case that would be Hitchcock. It says no special licensee may sell any. Well, I should I should agree with that. No special licensee. So that's typically the person who's taking out the permit. May sell any alcoholic beverages other than those purchased from a licensee. Wow, there's using a lot of licensees here. Under MGL chapter 138, 18, 19, 19. So what the what the intent of the CMR is is that uh, we'll use this example. Sue needs to purchase from Hitchcock because Hitchcock is a <coughs> licensee under MGL. I think they're 19 B or 19 C. Um, so I couldn't run out and grab a 30 right, pack. Right, so you can't go. For, yeah, you can't go right. to a package store and, and sell that. But. Right. Right, but it, does it indicate that Sue has to be the one who's selling it, or does Hitchcock have to be the one who's selling it, or can either of them be the one who's selling it, depending upon the logistics that they agree to? I think it could be just, either of them. But does it say that it could be, or is, are, we infer, are we inferring that? Um, well, the licensee, it would depend, on, I guess, would depend on who applies for the special one-day license. Okay, so it's the organization, not the the people who would be normally selling or providing the alcohol. Right. Uh, if it's that organization. It, I mean, it seems to me it's written like Sue and her organization have to purchase all the alcohol people there can't. But maybe because it doesn't say anything about other people who are there, maybe it's silent on that. that would be, it seems like that would be a, a ridiculous way to have it. But so I, I don't want to okay right. something that makes it seem like that. Yeah, you know, like that would be what we would have to enforce. So yeah, so there's two purchase. The, there's two purchases happening. Is what the yeah. what the same price provision one is. Let's say I'm a runner. What time my spouse is doing, and I go and I purchase the beer, uh -huh. and I I would be purchasing it from Hitchcock. Well, well, that's a little bit different. 
If he's the runner, he's running. If I'm the runner and I'm purchasing it, I would be purchasing it really from the you got it from, from the sale. licensee. Yeah. Um, right, and so essentially there's two purchases in the in, with yeah. one transaction. Yeah. Uh, kind of, because let's say you buy it from Hitchcock, and then Brian buys it from you. Right. That's that's the, that's how it's set up. But Hitchcock is going to sell it. We're not going to sell it. Yeah. But then they should be the licensee. Well, and and authorized uh, supplier. We may have to have a conversation. With right. The right. You shouldn't be the licensee then. Yeah. So Hitchcock would be both. And if you're not involved at all in any of it, or in the sale there, of it, just Hitchcock. Does their current license allow them to sell at this time of day? That's a good question. Because if, if, if they already have a license that allows for that, then it's not going to be a relevant point. They're them. not allowed to, to sell on prem. They're not allowed to retail. Or they're not allowed to pour, pour retail. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, the, so their license would not allow it. Just trying to find a way to make it work here. So, I, they they did say like when they did the Sunderland three fiftieth, I think it was they did. They said there was like no issues. There's no right. Yeah. Can I suggest this language? Just be inclusive of all options, so that uh, frankly, I don't think this board should care. Who is selling the beer? This board should just care that someone yeah. responsible has the authority to sell. So, can't this amended code that you just wrote talk about whoever is the licensee? So, if it's the third party, which in this case is the, is, is, is the half day marathon, fine. If it's the, the alcohol distributor, fine. Who cares as long yeah. as one of them? Well, then, uh, here's, let me propose something for Section 8 to tell me what you think about Sure. All alcohol for the event must be provided by an authorized supplier as set forth under the new revised mm -hmm. CMR. It's vague enough that if, uh, that it, we're, 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 I mean, we want the serve safe. We want the people who are, yeah. and we want the supplier to be legal. Um, we, don't want to have to cause everyone to purchase from somebody else. To, right. Would, would, would that be within the yeah? I mean, spirit and the letter of the of the state law. I mean, so regardless of, of what we write, the CMR, you know, yeah. two hundred four CMR seven hundred five is still on the books, and it says right. no special licensee may sell any alcoholic beverages other than those purchased from a licensee under or from a holder of a special permit to sell. It doesn't. It addresses the situation of we use cancer connection of cancer connection purchases the alcohol from a farm brewer. Uh, They're trying to control the what the the, the initial sale. Uh, right. So initial the cancer connection doesn't sales. buy from somebody with a still in the backyard. Right. Right. <coughs> that was the initial. Nothing against people with stills the in their backyard. Purpose of the CMR. I'm sure everyone has one. <laughs> So we could change those to um, all, all alcohol for the event must be provided, provided by an authorized supplier. And then and the, the licensing doesn't have to be in the sentence. But we're referencing that law, so. Okay. So, unless I'm jumping ahead of myself, you guys, can I make a motion that we accept these changes with these assuming these changes the changes we just discussed are made yeah i would say okay but one, one thing that this doesn't address is is the sale to somebody that's not a runner and we were deciding whether hitchcock brewing or whoever else they get it from can sell yeah, do they off premises in Waverly. Do they would they have to be named as a co? Uh, yeah, they are listed we, as we a co applicant. Yeah. 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 yeah, on the actual application, on not the actual application. Yeah. I mean, and they so, the There's a question of before we get to before we get to whose application. Yeah. Do you want do we want to amend the the, the rules? 
Yeah. And then the specifics of. Right. What's right? And that's that was my most. That's I think what yeah. Fred's getting at. Yeah. But but isn't Fred getting at subsequent to changing these? Well, no, I think that applies in this license they're asking for. Right. I, I agree. So I, I, I guess what I'm out. saying is that we can still adopt this yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. And then we deal with your question in this. But does that allow Hitchcock to sell? What, this? Yes. That's not. I think it would. Yeah. I, 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 but I guess my point is this would allow Hitchcock to sell if we approve the permit. So this would allow anybody to sell yeah. as long as we approve the permit. So this is the. the the infrastructure needed to make these applications or those future applications viable. So, so to Brian's point, let's get the logistics out of the way and then we can deal with the specifics that dictate whether Hitchcock can sell or not, or anybody in the future. Right? Is that, am I missing something? No, the special license that they're applying for is for the right to sell yeah. Right. to the public. Right, so I don't think that that question, I think Fred's right, we need that question addressed, but I don't think it yeah. is, I, I think we can still pass the logistics of, or the infrastructure, whatever you want to call it. But why, why, does, why does Hitchcock have to be listed? Because you can go to anybody to, to purchase. Well, because they're, the they're providing the insurance. Oh, okay. okay. They're, they're providing, providing the insurance. insurance. Okay. So yeah, in a way, it's kind of their, their event or their right, right, right. Because right. that's their sponsorship, right. so that's where they're. And again, to make sure it's not somebody still in the backyard. Right. Right. Okay. And they provide the license servers. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm agnostic on whether we actually change the wording on eight, but I think we should accept the new application that uh, Brian's proposed. Uh, with a possible change of <coughs> I would like to raise the changes made to eight yeah. personally but okay okay so motion with those changes second all those in favor aye aye okay now the application I did have one question That's sorry for the diversion the, on the application uh, yes yes um, it says that uh, under one of the bullet points uh, that the town uh, uh, that the town of Waitley would be listed on the insurance. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Must name town of Waitley as an additional insured. And I, maybe I'm not reading these, but I don't see town of Waitley listed as an additional insured. But it could be a. That's right. Most things are hidden right from my nose. So where would I look for that? Right on the uh, the one that says Town Waitley on the bottom. See it right above that box. Oh oh oh. Okay. The real time. I was looking for it up here. Oh no, way down no, here. No, this down at the bottom. Thank you. And if you look in that box above where it says Town Waitley, uh -huh. minuscule writing. Uh huh. It lists additional insurance. <laughs> it actually says that. It actually says additional insurance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's the only question. So one thing I couldn't find. So now, Fred, what's your question about? Did you have an issue or a concern on this? No. Oh, okay. So. I would move that we uh, grant the one day license for this event. Do we want to add the condition about the fence it specifically? It, like, we're, we're, we're either gonna, it, it is going to be uh, like considered a beer garden. It's either, either going to be fenced in or uh, we're going to try to get a tent with sides on it. Uh -huh. um, so if we hopefully we'll have three sides closed, uh -huh. um, maybe a half, you know, so uh -huh. the front and we'll have a, an entrance so where someone will have to check IDs. Time. Yeah. In order to get in and no alcohol will be allowed out. We had a question last time about the blue laws. Yep. Are they still in effect? Do they apply to this? So, so, CM, uh, 204 CMR 7 allows the sale under a special license. Um, let's 
to 7, uh, 7.03. The hours during which sales of alcoholic beverages may be made by a special licensee, which would be whoever we grant a license to, shall be fixed by the local authorities, but no special license may sell or deliver any alcoholic beverage between the hours of 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. So it could start as early as 8 or 1 a.m. And we're actually on a Sunday. You're starting at 802? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it's okay. 80101. <laughs> yeah. well, what time the, the event you say starting at 10? Is that, is that the ending starting at 10? Or we're we're going to start it at 10 um, and end it at 12.30. And is, is beer going to be for sale at 10 a.m. when it starts or just at the end of the race? Well, that is the end of the race. Oh, like the race starts at at eight. At oh, eight. I'm sorry. Race, oh, okay. I the got race that. But the eight. beer part won't start until. The time. I apologize. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, well, it's, I mean, I, I, I guess to me the only question is, do we explicitly make uh, fencing or tent as a condition for granting a license? I'm agnostic on that. It's two and a half hours. We will have some. What have you done in the past? Never done this. No, but then you had a tent or something up there, didn't you, in the past? Well, we have a tent with food and stuff, so we're just our, our tent guy. We're trying to figure out logistics, see what, what he does, if he has another tent with sides that we can um, separate. It'll be a separate tent. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. my only thought on, they're going to have some, and that's great. Yeah. But, Putting a marketing hat on for a second. Yeah. When you put tent flaps up, no one sees what what is capable of. No one sees what kinds of cool events are taking place in our town. No one sees that we're trying to do things that that are attracting people from outside. I, I never want to. As long as people are responsible inside that event, I never want to. Not hide. I, I, never, I never want to conceal the cool things that take place in Wayland. That's my only. So I don't know why we would require the flaps because I want people to know that this is, you know. I, I don't think, I wasn't saying require flaps, require some sort of border, whether it's a yeah. temporary fence. Oh, I see. Whether I'm it's, sorry. if they would like to do it with, the, they'd rather do it with a tent that has walls, I, you know, but, but to some kind of a border. Um, I, and, and I, really, I yeah, I, I understand that, that, you're gonna, that you guys are going to do that anyway, but I, I feel like if, if, if we're going to be doing events for other people, maybe people who we don't already have such a good relationship with, that it might seem unfair to put that kind of condition on their license when they're not put it on the other license. That's fair. Um, so it, it just might be prudent as a precedent to say, yeah, some kind of a border, uh, fence, or tent. Um, that's going to control access to the area where alcohol is served. Not not being specific about what that. We don't have to. We don't have to say what. It does yeah. have to be like enclosed. some some kind of a, some kind of indicating some kind of enclosure, mm -hmm. so that you know so people know boundaries. Yep. Yeah. yeah. With the, the license, there we I guess we proved that the revisions doesn't say whether it's inside or outside, right? Well, the uh, the app yeah, that's true the application so but right. on any license we issue we have the right to put conditions. But should we have something in our rules on that that it should in be rules? in some contained or confined area or yeah. identified area not just in an open say ball field or well, somebody might use the same form for something that's going to happen inside of the place. Right. Which, and then the, you know, the, the well, building would have doors already. Yeah. So or, uh, and her, you know, think of Hurley, think of the muster that happens in Hurley. Yeah. You could argue, well, it's the entire footprint of Hurley that's there, right. yeah. grounding them. You don't want to put an additional boundary tape around that. If they're using the whole facility, they're using the whole facility. So I think that as appropriate, it's a good idea, but I don't think it's. Well, you got the same conditions there. You got the whole ball field. Uh, oh no, we're not going to use the whole ball field. <laughs> right, but but I'm saying that some people yeah. might at some point. So yeah. I, I think it should be a case by case person. Okay. So what are we saying? We need to add a condition here that it be in a. I'm going to check. I think that we actually sign, or does it have to be on here? It would be on, on the license that we sign, 
Um, but if you want to approve yeah. it tonight, then yeah, we can sign it. We sign yeah. it next week. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, I think it would be good if we could get pretty close to the water that we want. Okay. For the condition? Yeah. Okay. Um, the condition would be one that areas in which alcohol are served will be uh, clearly, uh, will have a clear boundary. Uh, parentheses, fencing, tent walls, a visible, maybe visible boundary. Okay, clearly marked. Clearly marked, yeah. With that amendment, I would make a motion to accept the application. Second. Do you want think about uh, there'll be somebody monitoring the entrances? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I thought that was already. Monitoring the entrances for what I mean? Access. Checking ID. And not letting. So we're not going to allow someone's kid to, who's a runner to, to be in that area? No. Why not? They're not allowed to drink. I understand that. But why wouldn't they be allowed to be in that area? Because you could easily see a bunch of adults who are congregating because they're having a drink. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> that, that's making this an, an event where a five-year-old can't can't be there. Well, even uh, even runners that are underage are going to be there. Right. Right. I, I don't think go into the beer. That's where the surf safe, but but that's the uh, that's the responsibility of the surf safe person to make sure that he or she does not serve someone under twenty-one years old. But we shouldn't be precluding. I mean, if if. You know, you, you want your, you, know, you just finished 13 miles and you're going to run your kid from, I, I, it's your, your call, but I. No, <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, my concern was more that, that we don't have open containers leaving the beer area. I, that's my concern as well. Age, age isn't my concern. It's making sure that people don't walk off and walk Yeah, and, yeah I guess I was looking through you the rules that. here. And, um, it, it, it doesn't explicitly say anything about that. Um, and we just kind of implied that the, the bartender has to serve within the law, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we could say with, to, uh, yeah, uh, with with personnel to check uh, that alcohol is not leaving. The confined, the marked the, area. The marked area. Yeah. Okay. So could, how about entrances shall be monitored to ensure, is that okay? Mm -hmm. With you guys? Okay. Entrances shall be monitored to ensure alcohol stays within the designated. Yeah, the designated. Okay. okay. With those conditions, we want to. Yeah, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Thanks so we'll type it up and we'll have them sign it. Okay. Okay, we are going to um, rearrange the agenda a little bit and we are going to talk about. 27th. Thank you. Thanks. Sign on the 27th. We're going to talk about health insurance better. What do we got for you have somewhere to go tonight? <laughs> what, what, Dan, what, what's your beef? What's your My beef? Oh, I thought Dan had a beef. Nope. Oh. Dan's a happy camper. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. We're doing something right then. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian, your show. So, if this seems like deja vu, it is. Oh, my God. It does. Just last year. Just last year. So Waitley is part of the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust, as we all know. Yes. And we are a member of the trust, and the trust makes decisions as to um, plan change at top. Plan changes, plan benefit changes. Um, and we went through this process last year um, only for the trust to decide that the 23rd and a half hour that um, 
they decided not to go through with those changes. Yeah. Um, and they promised us that they would be back if um, plan changes for this year, which they have made good on their promise. Um, I provided you this spreadsheet here that's in your packet. Um, this one is a little bit you should have one in your yeah, there's, in your print there's, packet where I folded one, one and three. Uh, and I put them right next to each other so we can talk about these. Um, I gotta find you quickly. Where are you then? Uh, this is this kind of smaller packet of newer stuff. This is where I found this one. A spreadsheet? Yeah. It's in there. Turn a couple more pages. But the uh, it's after the uh, after that. Uh, the town hall oh, application. Yeah, it's after the town hall application. Yeah. Yep. New business, right after new business. One plus side tabs. Oh. So what's the red lines? I did want to see how it was compared to the 20. Yeah, so we'll run through that quickly and then we'll talk procedurally about what, what needs to happen. So what they're proposing, we'll just run down the list here. The office, um, so office visits, currently it's 50. So under, I'm looking at column one now, uh -huh. under trust. Wherever there's a dash, the one the number to the left is the HMO, the number to the right is the PPO. We don't have anybody currently on the PPO. Um, um, so for office visits, it would increase, the co-pays would, would increase for from $15 to $20 for the HMO, and it would stay the same for the PPO. Specialist visits, which is currently 15-20, 15-20 split, would go up to 35. ER visit co-pay would increase from 75 to 100. Imaging co-pay would increase from um, no co-pay to 100. Outpatient co-pay would increase from zero to 150. Hospital co-pay would increase from zero to 250. Um, and then um, pharmaceutical copaying in this is dead cut, but it should be deductible. Um, what do, so these are different tiers of prescriptions that are here: yeah. 10, 25, 45. So it would increase 10, 30, 65. <laughs> and then currently um, it's 20, 50, 90, and it will go up 25, 75, 165. And they're proposing that there be a pharmaceutical deductible. Uh, currently there is not one and that would um, be 100 for an individual and 200 for a family. With these proposed changes, they're, they're, they, are, they would not um, have a premium increase this year. So that's, that's kind of um, new information. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, the premiums would stay the same. These changes have been discussed with the teachers. Um, not yet, right? Not yet. No, no. So where we are, um, where we are in terms of the process, the town needs to to vote and intend to make um, health plan changes. So that requires a notice was sent to Uni Thirty Eight, and it was sent to the retired. County, state, municipal employee is the state agency um, as well, as required by the statute. The process that we're going to go through is if the board votes tonight, um, it's intent to make plan changes. Um, we'd have meetings with um, what's called the IAC, which is the, our insurance advisory committee, uh -huh. which we don't have a standing one. So we, last year it was, was represented from E38. Rep, um, Bill Smith was a representative for the retirees, and that was that was it. Um, we need to go through um, that process with the IAC, PEC, which we also don't have. It's the same people in the room, um, and we're sharing, you know, a certain percentage. We talked about this last year of our savings. Um, yes. So tonight is really a procedural step where where the board would need to vote. Um, it's intent to make health plan changes. Um, Does it matter that this is a is a, a teacher negotiation here? Um, 
that doesn't change the process, this particular aspect then? I, that's a good question. I, that's a good question. Okay. The instructions that, that, that I've had from the trust is that they, they're, they're treating it as the same as as any other year. Yeah. Um, but I guess I, I don't know the, the, what the current negotiations are um, and whether they address that or not. Interesting. No, I didn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, at the, they're at the early stages. Yeah. This is all I can really say. But if, if you look at the, the bigger spreadsheet, uh, you know that if you're going from the trust, well, if we're going to stay with the trust or go to any of the other ones, the changes are, are roughly the same. From the zero ones, all the others are charging $100 or $150 or $250. So it's not like you're, yeah. you have an option to, to reduce that. Whoever else you go with is, is going to yeah. have that deduction. Now, I don't know about the, the prescription copay, as some have more than others, but you're, you're, you're comparing apples to apples here. Things are, look similar. So what yeah. company you go with, uh, I don't know, the, the premiums may change a little, but not substantially. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, this sheet was provided by the trust. Yeah. Um, so they provided the GIC, Westfield, Berkshire yeah. House, people yeah. scan. Get a scientific file um, for comparison purposes, I believe. Yeah. But they're all in the same, same right. dollar range for deductibles and co pays. So. Yeah, so. Right. Oh, yeah, there's like for prescription drugs, as if they don't have it, and there's a few here and there, there's a co pay that's yeah. not as big. But on the whole, the, uh, I'm happy to see that proposed changes are actually smaller co pays. Uh, than what they proposed last year because those did seem really outrageous like the five hundred dollar hospital copay and outpatient two fifty and so on. But those are um, well one's cut in half and one is about two thirds, right? Um, then uh, most of the other copays are about the same the hundred dollar ones well forty one to thirty five. So even though all of these are increases compared to what we have now, it's a smaller increase than we were being asked to to suck it up for last time around, uh, and that and you're pointing out, Fred, that all of these. If I look at column three, these numbers are about the same uh, as the others, and actually better than many, as many of the others have a five hundred dollar uh, hospital copay, for example. Maybe the, the first line is is a bigger difference. The first row we look at. Other, other than the trust, they all charge something, whereas the trust doesn't. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a bigger difference. Yeah. So. Does, does network come into play at all on this or no? John, Lim limiting where people can go? Um, well, it would be the specifics of the HMO or the PPO. Right. So, so yeah, this doesn't show the, the specifics. Um, well, that's my so question. You, yeah. So that's my question. I mean, we're looking at numbers here, but you know, with numbers, there needs to be a conversation about access and can I stay with my doctor? Because that's what a lot of people are concerned about. There would be no, there's no changes to the the, the plan itself. HMO, no. HMO Blue New England, these, these are both for HMO Blue New England, okay. whatever the PPO is called. Okay. Yeah. If, if we went with somebody else, then, then I don't know. Well, that's sort of my question. If we went with, with with Trust, GIC, Westfield, Berkshire Health, that would change them. In, in theory, it could. They could have a top provider different than Blue Cross. Right. Right. Okay. But that's not being proposed here. We're just proposing a discussion on. Yeah, that's my understanding. And and is the conversation that's going to take place going to be a conversation about some members of? Some of our employees may want a premium hike, and not the. Do, would we have a choice of a no, premium hike that choice. occurred? So they're going to decide. They've already decided that they want to go with, in this direction. And I guess my question is, if they've already decided this, have they decided this? And so I don't know what whether you're the appropriate person to ask, but I guess has a conversation taken place with the members? as to whether they 
like this direction or whether they would prefer to see the premium increase and not the <coughs> individual changes because of their of the majority of our of our population is in a situation where they just want to see the premium increase because they're going to utilize these things more often. I, I guess I want to know whether that conversation is taking place. I don't know the I don't know that. Right, but yeah. isn't that a fair question? Uh, I don't know. It's fair. I think that's <laughs> that's I think that's those are the two policy are the the policy arguments that happen at the trust is. Keep premiums low and you increase co pays people who don't use it. I, I and if so, you use it, then you pay more. Right. Pay, yeah. But yeah. I guess because there are employees, right? Shouldn't we be on behalf of those employees asking if they've been asked, if they've received some kind of type of a survey, either a verbal survey or a written survey or, or what have you? And I'm not saying the decision's wrong. I'm just wondering whether the people that, that this is benefiting have been have been surveyed about how do they feel about direction one direction or another. Because I know we used to have an employee who would absolutely want to see a premium increase because of health situations. Where if you have a bunch of employees who are 25 years old, they're going to want something else. And and, and we're being asked to vote on something, whether we, you know, to, to, to enter into these conversations to change the, the process. And, and I don't know whether our employees have been involved in the discussion. Uh, I, I express an intent to do something that we would certainly get the employees at the table. But my understanding is, if this is really a rerun of last year's, our current insurer is saying they're not going to offer this first call to anybody. They're not definitely. Well, okay, last year they said not definitely, right. and at the last minute they right. went back. Right. Okay, but so we, we're replaying last year. So if we replay last year, if we wanted to go somewhere else and ask them, give me the same exact coverage, what would the, we, we could do that. And what happened last year was, we, the NMA would give you some nice introductory rate, and then they would be able, able to jack it up in a couple of years. So, you know, at this point, does it matter if they asked her? I, I doubt they asked our employees. They know what their claims are. They know what they have to raise it so that they don't lose too much money. I'm just trying to yeah, yeah. I, I don't think insurance companies, to my knowledge, are, I have never been asked, what do I think of the policies that they're offering? I get dozens I can pick from every year. And I, I don't think insurance companies have the time to ask all their insurers, well, what do you want to change in your policy this year? Because it's, it's you, so variable whether you use it or not, and then your family situation is another another consideration too. I think they develop something that is say, profitable for them and yet gets people to subscribe to it. And you either take it or leave it. I don't think you, you can negotiate with them. Like your you know, car insurance, well, I want to value it less than what it is. I don't think you, uh, health insurance companies let you do that. But so I want to pay more premium so I get different coverage. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna take issue with that because we see options. Right, but but that's a fixed option they're giving you. I don't think that any of them are gonna want to negotiate. If you want to go with with Westfield, I, I get that. I, they're I, gonna, they're gonna say that's it. What I, you see I that? totally get that. I just, I, I, that was, that this was the concern of the, of, of the people who came to us last year, and I'm just right. sort of representing yeah, their well, concerns. The, their, their, their uh, concern should be which one of these best fits their situation. But I think these, should, are, comparisons. Yeah, these are comparisons, comparisons provided by the people who want right. us to pick column three. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so I, you know, I think what John's, maybe reading between the lines, what John's saying is, these are not the only things we should be comparing. We should probably find out, find what other options we have. Yeah. MMA, well, whatever others right. we... Um, that might be that might or be the GIC. Only, or the GIC, uh, which I think I, maybe we ask them specifically because there seems to be a lot of NAs and not filled in data here. Yeah, that's um, that's but we, we we should put the options out there and have the discussion, right? We could ask Sunderland; they have an optional program. Do they? 
Yeah, I think they, they went off of the trust. I think they went to MMA. That was what I heard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so at this point then, Brian. Yes. And we're going to let everyone know that we're doing this, right? So they're not. We've sent we out notice. We have already. Past tense. Yeah. We're, we're required to send out notice of this meeting tonight. Oh, okay. There is a representative for the U38 here. Would you like to say anything, sir? Well, I'm a representative from the Mass Teachers yes. Association. We, uh, our locals and our local and Union 38, I'm the field representative for them. But uh, your name, I'm sorry. My name is Brad Russo. The questions that you have about the trust and their decisions, I think, really should be directed towards the trust as to why they made the decisions that they did. You know, I understand the debate. I can tell you that. Uh, the members have not been individually surveyed about whether they would prefer premiums to increase or to follow the co-pays, have the co-pays go up. I think generally, and I'm not speaking for them directly because they haven't had that choice, I think we would say we prefer premiums going up because uh, the, the cost is spread a lot more widely among uh, everyone than just having the individual co-pays go up. When the co-pays go up, there's a certain group within the right. population that gets hit hardest on it. So, you know, that's, that's I think, the debate that, uh, you know, that we have internally when we talk about it. I can't speak for the trust, uh, whether they did, you know, I, I, you know I, I can't say they did or they didn't. Uh, but I would imagine they did. You know, they have representatives, they have a process. Okay, so I guess, I guess we have to declare our intention yeah. to start this process. Yes, yeah. so I would like to move that the town of Whitley elect to engage in the process to change health insurance benefits under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 32B, Sections 21 through 23. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Not enthusiastically, but. The whole thing kind of stinks. Yeah. Okay, um, you know what, Brian, I would like to do a little bit. Thank you. Um, let's go to town council. I know Paul is here for the Watermelon Wednesdays things, but then I think we perhaps should talk about the town council letter or email first and then go to Paul so that we don't waste Paul's time. Yep. So, yeah, do we need to read this into the record or anything, or just let Paul take a look at the letter too? Should we talk, just talk about what it says? Maybe that's probably best to talk about what it says. Um, I'll read it. Okay. We we ask council to we ask council to um, take a look at our understanding of town hall use policy, building policy and uh, get his or her judgment or their judgment on whether we are reading it correctly and also on whether the appeal uh, for our interpretation of town hall use policy uh, is a viable appeal. Is that a pretty accurate summary? Yeah, I would say, I would say we're not as much interested in the building policy that the board adopted. The issue is more of whether um, the activities that we want to occur there have historically taken place in that building so that they could be considered informally, you know, the informal term is grandfathered, but whether the town has a vested right to continue using those activities. Right. Um, okay. So that, that's really what, what we asked town council for. Okay. So the email from uh, Dave Dineski says, I'm writing to follow up on the question of considering town hall use applications under the Whitley Town Hall building policy from non-town entities or persons in light of the fact that an appeal has been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals regarding the permissible use of the building. Appeal of 190 Chestnut Plain Road, trust dated December 27, 2018. In particular, the appeal alleges that the policy contains uses beyond the historic uses identified as permissible in a May 22, 2018 letter of the Building Commissioner to Attorney John Gates, Counsel for the Applicant. 
uh, parenthetical historical use of the building has been and remains a non-conforming municipal use. In my opinion, and this is Dave speaking, um, in my opinion, the filing, filing of the appeal does not preclude the town from processing and approving such town hall use applications. It does not affect, it, it does not have the effect of prohibiting such action. Rather, the appeal will be considered on its merits by the ZBA at the hearing which has been scheduled for April 4. On the issue of historical use, you have provided me with information from various town officials and residents describing the various non-governmental uses of Old Town Hall over the years of its existence. In my view, the information demonstrates that the historic uses of the building include events, meetings, and functions conducted by non-town organizations and groups such as theatrical performances, concerts, and dances. In my experience, such uses would be consistent with the history of town halls in Massachusetts, which contain a great hall or auditorium which can serve as a gathering space. I will be providing a more formal opinion on this matter in connection with the appeal to be heard by the ZBA. Please contact me, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we can move forward based upon this. We can move forward and then we will have to pivot if the ZBA says that they're not in agreement with our interpretation. Is that fair, Brian? Uh, right? Yeah, so, so I guess the, the question is, if we go through something unexpected happens with the ZBA, um, say the ZBA doesn't see things the same way our attorney does. Um, what happens to something that has been scheduled before April 4th, you know, for a date, you know, for, uh, sorry, the scheduling itself took place before April 4th, but the event is after April 4th. And my reading is that that event could still go on. Um, and at least in part because zoning board or ZBA actions um, have sort of an inherent uh, there's a time period in which you have to give people time to appeal, right? Mm -hmm. And the event actually falls within that period. So then we're pro and we wouldn't be putting the, the applicants at risk here by, uh, uh, by uh, approving it and then saying, that, well, oh, gee, we didn't know the ZBA was going to do this. Right? It could be a one and done, but it we could wouldn't be. have it. But yeah, but for so certainly for that event, and I, I really, well, I probably shouldn't say what side I'm on, but I, I think what the attorney is saying here is very reasonable. I guess my my comment on this is, that I was at the last CPA meeting where this is on the agenda, supposed to be discussed, and it was postponed until uh, they picked a date of April 4th. And what I heard, the reason for that date, and I guess you can verify this in the, in the minutes of the ZBA meeting on that day, that their attorney was gonna wait to see what the decision, what came from our attorney. And if he agreed with that, then there'd be no need to meet with ZBA on April 4th. The reason they put an April date in, because they had no idea when our attorney would come back and they wanted to look at it, so they wanted time to do that. So so in the meantime, this may be a mute issue. If their attorney agrees with this, there will be nothing on it for ZBA to act on. So maybe we should wait to hear from, you know, I don't know how this, how or when this is going to the, their, the other attorney here. Uh, to see if they agree and get back to the board or to Brian to see whether this needs further discussion with ZBA or, or, or what. I, I think we're, we're caught in the middle, but I, I don't feel comfortable right now, I guess, taking an action until we hear from, uh, from the, the... Yeah, the but then attorney. we're basically giving them the... the that, that gives them the power to make the decision. Because no, they, could no just, well, they could just have no action and not get back to us, and not get back to us, not get back to us. And well, I we could ask for a response date, and then... By the yeah, I said. I mean, his opinion is, obviously, it, there's no details here. His opinion is really paragraph three. Um, yeah. That's what he will, that's right. what his opinion will, will say in detail. Right. Yeah. And, and the board is within its rights to act within, or act on the opinion of its counsel. 
And if we don't act, we are essentially acting. Well, you're, you're assuming it's okay if we don't act. Then. I don't think it's not okay. No, I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm you saying that, you, 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 I, and, 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 and forgive me if I'm misinterpreting what you're saying, Fred, okay. but I'm hearing you saying we should not act on the application that's in front of us right now. Is that not what you're yeah, saying? And I think we've put off acting on it a long time. I, I agree. So if we don't act on the current application. When did we, when did we receive this? January 9th, okay. Right. And, and so it, it's been a, a just just over a month now. Yeah. And if we don't act, we're essentially acting. We're essentially making a decision to not heed the advice of counsel or get or to not go in the direction of counsel saying we are justified in going. We, we paid for this advice. Right, right. And so do we do we trust our, our that our council is giving us good advice? We always I, have. I, I I don't have any reason not to think um, that uh, they're they're giving us good advice. So, um, so so let me let me play this out. If, if we if we act on this today, whatever action we take, and. ZBA is still going to meet on April 4th to discuss it. Right. What, how does that impact the actions we're taking today? So, let's say so we approved the, the application today. How is that going to affect it? Does that mean we withdraw our approval or it doesn't apply since it was before April 4th? Uh, I, I, would argue that, I would argue that it doesn't apply. It, it applies going forward post this application. Okay. But it would not apply to this snapshot in time application. Would okay. Joyce would that, you agree that, with that's what that's yeah that was what I was trying to say before right. was that uh, it, it might seem more complicated because the April fourth is in between now and the actual right. event, but the event is close enough to April fourth that I think it's covered in the thirty day appeal period, and we may want to appeal if the ZBA we may want to be at the board of selectmen. Tries to appeal. I don't know who the appropriate group would be to do the appeal, but I, I think I'd want to appeal that. It's not 30 um, days, it's what? Or is it 14 days? Is it 30 days? I thought it was 30 days. Is it I'm not sure exactly what the, the appeal of the appeal essentially is. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, it, whatever. But. I don't know that I have 100% clarity on. If on April fourth the ZBA said this doesn't this doesn't fall within the rights that the town has vested to use the building this way, I, I don't I'm not 100 percent clear as to whether we could if something was scheduled go forward with it. You don't know that we could. I think I would want to ask that question specifically to council, and that's really a I mean that's really a. Uh, in uncertainty that the applicant would have to deal with or is dealing with, I'm not sure. I assume this is still scheduled. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I need to make a scoop deadline. I need to do PR. I need to send out contracts and sign. Yeah. And once they're signed, then I'm out that money no matter what happens. Right. So if I was in ZBA said, sorry. Then I'd have to not have the show and pay the performers. Would the ZBA not say special permit required? I don't think they're going to say yes or no. They would they would make a decision whether the special permit was required to have the event. I don't think it I don't think it dictates whether the event is allowable, only allowable under current rules. But ZBA would, would then set up a special permit. That would I think be the normal process. In the event they decide a special permit is required, but the, 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 the challenge there, I believe, would be the, the, the timing on that special permit. Then. Well, timing is, is I can't help you with that. Right. You know, I'm saying it's not a go no go on Paul's part. It would be a re potential requirement of a special permit. Now, right. they could maybe issue that. Okay. Sorry, I thought special permits were about like the the whole building like when you you putting up a building or doing the renovation or doing whatever you're doing to a building some things need, require a special permit and you do that once 
Yeah. You don't do it like on an event by event basis. For when, when you're going I think to the more like a type of event. If it's a town meeting or the Grange or whatever, that doesn't get covered under a special permit. But potentially, let's I'm just using Paul as the example, where you charge at the door, they may say, in these circumstances, we think a special permit's required. I mean that's what the Z I don't think the ZBA would say no. But then we would then we would appeal their judgment that a special permit, or somebody may appeal that a special permit was required. Potentially, but I, there's, you know, they may say you need somebody in the parking lot. That may be the right. grounds of the special requirement. You know, it, it's not, I don't see it as totally onerous, is, I guess is where I'm going. Brian, can, can we ask our council if uh, I hear what your, your comment was here about your concern whether we can in April decide something different? Can we ask town council how, what authority we would have to, to act in April on this? Like put, that, like put that like put the hypothetical to our to our town council but because what I was reading was um, uh, the filing of the appeal does not preclude the town from processing and approving such town hall use applications yeah okay so we can approve it it does not have the effect of prohibiting such action so this appeal doesn't mean it's going to prohibit the action. Rather, the appeal will be considered on its merits at the CBA hearing. My interpretation of, of the phrase such action means, refers back to the board's processing and approving uh -huh. of, the, of the applications. If I could just go okay. back, if I could just go back for one second. If you, you can get special permits really for two things. One are physical alterations to the two structures, which we had to do for the then you can also get use special permits, which um, in this case, I think it's, you can get a special permit to, um, it's considered a non-conforming municipal use. You could extend, you, you could extend the non-conforming use. Um, we would have to go um, and possibly apply for a special permit. Hypothetically, let's say the decision of the ZBA was, um, you can only have municipal buildings there. That's, they would say, historically, uh, municipal meetings in that building. Um, um, if we wanted to hold something that wasn't a municipal meeting or municipal function, we would <coughs> really have two options, I think. One would seek a special permit or seek a zoning change. Um, I think those are our two options um, based on, on that ZBA decision. So. Hypothetically, because I'm throwing a dart here. If Paul, as the applicant, went to pick a town committee yeah. and said, we'd like to co-sponsor this with you, then it's suddenly a government meeting. Or at least. I mean, it, 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 just, it, 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 it just is. When we have when we have the Memorial Day parade and the Frontier Band is is outside of that building, it's a municipal activity because we're sponsoring that band. So yes, <laughs> we are in the range. Well, well, whoever. I mean, it's, but so I guess it half full. <laughs> well, I, have to I, I mean, in this what? case, I'm, no, in, in this case, the, the risk, the risk is all on, is all on Paul. Yep. Yeah. Which, and I wish that were not the case. I do too. I wish it were with. I wish the the waiting period was sixteen days instead of fifteen. Are we sure that's the waiting period? Uh, I think Brian sure. just looked it up. And this would be an appeal to Superior Court. Mm -hmm. Oh, that appeal's not going to happen. Fourteen days. Yeah. Sixteen days even. Or, uh, you know, we've gone from the appeal of the building inspector position to the CBA, which if we don't agree with the CBA, then either party could appeal to Superior Court. Right. Well, if we've ever done it. And then, and, but then our decision is the trump card until the Superior Court says otherwise. 
correct? ZBA's decision. Say it again? ZBA's decision. Okay. Oh, the ZBA would, oh, would, would, would <coughs> so circumvent our would. decision at that point? No. Because it's a question of zoning, yes. This is a zoning. In, at its core, this is a question of zoning. It's a question of the Zoning Act, whether we have the right to use the building in a certain manner. So what, what, what town council is saying is that there's nothing that should prevent us from, from processing and approving these uses um, or these events or activities. But what happens when the, when the yeah. what happens to the ZBA hearing, uh, I'm not, and, I can't predict that. And Okay. Well, so um, I think I, I would like to any more certainty, really. I would like to move to uh, like to approve this uh, application, but I would also like to see, and I don't know if this would have to be a condition. Um, my understanding is that the people who are allowed to go out and make uh, noise readings have somebody go out and make a real noise rating. My understanding is that uh, at one point they, they tested out the soundproofing by having the milk bottle band in there playing as loud as they could and that it was not audible. You couldn't hear it from outside. But let's get let's get a measurement. Let's go to the edge of the property uh, and see how many dB we read. And does it violate any noise ordinances? Is it, is it even audible? Um, and let's collect that data. So that would mean, as I think it's the Board of Health who has to take care of that. Um, and we might need to buy a DB meter or we could probably arrange to borrow one from Smith if, uh, if we don't have one readily available. But, uh, are, you, are you talking about during the event? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say during the event, let's, let's find out. Let's make a measure because I think that would um, Whatever the ZBA says, that will strengthen our position to have real data. Assuming the event goes forward. So, yeah. a question about the noise. It seems that the appeal is based on non-conforming uses, not noise, right? But I think that's what the people are actually worried about is noise. Is that so? Warning. At least, at least that's, one, that's one thing that they have expressed. Um, but the about. noise ordinance for the town goes into effect at 10 p.m., the concert would be over before that. Right. Okay, so your application says 11. The well, town hall right. has its own noise ordinances. That's true. Yeah. The town oh. hall has its own. And I don't remember what the decibel level was, but. Uh, can be heard from the property line. Yeah, that's. At all. At all. There's no decibel designated. Right. But I think, I think you can, you can measure with decibels yeah. what is inaudible is this it's just a very low decibel so that's uh, in compared to background so that's any time of day yes any town hall use that's why you can't mean. shoot it's a town hall the policy the that, the, that the board put together it has well amplified sound just amplified yeah. so if we don't use amplification okay you might um, be able to use amplification and also be okay Hopefully. I mean, I, but but let, let, let's get out there and, and measure it. If, if it's below the ambient, then we, you know, I think that's, that, I think that'd be a really good thing to know. Sure. Because I think that's something you can know in an objective scientific way. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for it. So, so let's, let's find out. But again, that has nothing to do with the use policy. Two yeah, the, I understand it doesn't affect use policy. I'm just suggesting that we do this while we have this particular opportunity or potentially. And, and I don't think property. you're going to hear it because it, it, I've been to Watermelon Wednesdays. I think you have, Joyce. Uh -huh. And even in the West Whateley Chapel, and now I've been inside during the event, but not, not and that doesn't have any acoustical. You can't hear much outside that building. <coughs> so, you don't have the Ramones in there. In fact, my neighbors asked me to open the window so they can hear it. There you go. Tell them to buy a ticket. 
But so I just need some clarity here because I have to talk to people. I have to make these arrangements. Uh, uh, so as I understand it, you've approved the application. Oh, I, I move that we approve it. You move yeah. that you approve it. If you approve it, then I, I would like to go ahead. And, and if I go ahead, I understand that I'm risking the possibility CBA will, um, what, respond to the appeal in such a way as to um, prohibit, the use. prohibit the use of or require a special permit for use. I don't think they'll prohibit. And what's what's involved in getting a special permit? How big a deal, time-wise? Well, I mean, advertising alone is two weeks. And I won't know until the fourteenth, fourth, if they prohibit it. There's, there's really not time to get a special. Permit. So basically, I'm taking a risk. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not sure I want to take this. Uh, maybe I'll cancel. How about a May 4th? Uh, these people have a, they're busy. It was all I could do to get April 20th. I guess I, I, I still have a concern of the timing here. Our use policy and town zoning says 10 p.m. And we even go back, we even say a half hour after. I'm okay if you change it to 10 p.m. I just want to give people time to get out of the building and for me to clean up, and that's going to take more than right. The event now. itself is over. The event will be over by 10. Right. Okay, that's what it should be. It should be. But he still needs he still needs a permit to use the building. I need to occupy right. the building for an hour after that. To right. right. So he has to hire a dump. Right. And, and the, the, other, the other concern I have, not only with this application, but I think we've got another one, is they circled here, Waverly based nonprofit organization. How do we know it's a nonprofit? I've got an IRS stat. Okay, you do well. Maybe we should have, we should be asking for that here, for some verification of that. Uh, this other one, you know, I could hold a party there. I'm nonprofit. I'm not making any. But we don't require nonprofit. We don't require nonprofit. It's one of the conditions in the, in the use policy of when you can use it if you're a nonprofit. There's no fee. Okay, so you can still use it, but, but, well, but let's not confuse use with paying to use. I mean, you can still use it. You just, if you're a for profit entity, you pay to use it. If you're a nonprofit uh, entity, you don't pay to use it. But that. No, well, the pay was only if you charged an admission, I thought. Okay, but that but that's fine. But but anyone can use the building if it fits within our criterion, regardless of what their IRS tax status is. Yeah, but you can be a non resident uh, uh, nonprofit and use the building. And but I'm saying if it's your non resident nonprofit, I would like to see your nonprofit certification or whatever. Okay. I can see that. Totally fair. And that should be somewhere on the application here. Just circling it. I mean, anybody can circle that. I'm, I'm nonprofit. But right. The application should have the employer ID number, and okay. it should ask for a, a, a PDF of their right. C3 letter from the IRS. And that's easy. Right. We, we can do that. But I was thinking our, our, our final policy, I was trying to look it up here, didn't actually matter if you were a nonprofit. No. You just get charged if you're. Yeah. You know, you, you could be a non-resident nonprofit and still use it yeah. without a fee. It's at table. Yeah. Not if you charge admission. I think you have to well, that was different. You would buy right there. And and and, and so we at some point we should revisit that because fees we should be charged pay. for this thing because it's not cheap to not operate this building. But or weekly based business. So it doesn't really matter if you're a nonprofit or a for-profit or just a weightly based organization or a resident. The fee schedule is the same, right? So it's sort of it doesn't really matter. Well, weightly based nonprofit, I guess, is maybe. But they so. but they pay the same thing as a weightly based business that's for-profit. It's not like you get a break for being a nonprofit. You don't under this, right? 
It's okay. not like all others are, you know, if you're a nonprofit, you get a different rate or anything like that. It's, it was really just being weightly based, whether it's a resident, an organization, a nonprofit, or a business. All of those have the same fee structure. So, to take this a step further, we have another application here. I just want to be consistent that if the ZBA rules against Paul's application for use, then the application that would be that would that would transfer that decision would transfer to the Hartsbrook Garland Dance Group as well as a non-conforming use. It would depend on the specifics of the decision, but in theory, yes. But is the ZBA being asked for that level of specificity? Because I could see this huge nebulous, not for their own, not by their own, not by any fault of theirs, but they're not being asked what the overall historic use is. That's for somebody else to decide. They're being asked about a concert as its use. No, their their appeal is, is the larger issue. Uh, but are they still? But how? But what's the definition that they're being asked to? They're being asked to decide the question: What are the grandfather uses? What are the grandfathered events and activities that the town has a vested right to continue in the, in its entirety? Yeah. Only for this building, but not for other town halls in other towns. Correct. Because and so the craft fair for which merchants were in there charging for their selling. That was a commercial enterprise. That was okay. Sponsored by the, the historical library. library. Well, it doesn't matter who it's sponsored by, does it? Town, town function. Town library. Oh. Town what function. That's my point about. So maybe you get the library to sponsor the concert. Whoever. As long as they get a cut. <laughs> but it, it, but under that concept, that's that went forward. As a library event, and their partnerships included all the vendors. As I read it, they used to have it at the library, right? And then they, they moved it to this nice building that we invested one point something. Oh, million. that's right. Oh, that's interesting. Well, so that was purely for profit. Oh, being important. I bet the library got a cut. But yeah. Well, the library gets a cut, but the merchants. Sure, we're selling. They weren't doing it out of the goodness of their heart, which is fine. I, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm not making a profit. That's the only difference. Right. Yeah. This way you make less. So I, I guess as as I read it, Paul Paul could. Because then that that is grandpa. That happened already under the current. Since the renovations took place, we've allowed that to happen. Well, then maybe we need to change the applicant here sure, like from Paul Newman to whoever is the applicant. If you or or co-application. Or co-applicant. Uh, talk to the library, I guess. Or to, to historical society. Or historical society. Historical are, the, are the banjos that are being used old? Yes. Okay. The cello is 200 years old. It's a cello and violin. Very loud. <laughs> well, you have a daughter for the cello. No. So I guess the, the idea is that, that to help mitigate risk, have a municipal partner. Well, yes, from Paul's perspective. From Paul's perspective. But but from from I'll speak for myself on this board. It's to demonstrate the absolute inconsistency in what's being argued here. Yeah. By right. the way, the historical society is not. Town. Right. Exactly. So I'd have commission. to get the historical commission. commission. Right. right. Okay. Or right. I guess take a pick of other. Or the select. Right. Could we go to the I just I'm just pointing out the inconsistency that we have. We have a we have a, a town hall that's being select. We, we selectively are using are saying what. Is possible 
within grandfathered uses based upon a whim. And we, yeah, and we should, if it's really going to be good going the grandfather group, then, I mean, it, it, that's the other thing he mentions here, is that we've already got evidence that there were theatrical performances, concerts, and dances here. I've been to concerts and dances at the town hall in the 90s. They've been, they've been happening there. I mean, I'm actually optimistic about what the ZBA will decide, given evidence in front of them. Um, that's me, Not sure. but I know we, sure. we often have to just consider right. the what if right. things, though. And we're not risking like Paul. Yes. So. I think the real issue is the, is the size of the group that's going to be there. Regardless of what it is or what you call it, I, I think people are concerned of, say, the 200 people that are going to be there. What's going to happen to the town? What's going to happen to the town hall? How are you going to control the whole well, thing? Things that happened with town meeting when I was out there. Well, uh, but you supposedly got some, well, maybe more controlled audience than you do with 200 people coming from. Have you from been to Watermelon Wednesday? Well, no. It's not an out of control group. It's not. No. But yeah. does you get 200 people there, though? I can't get 200 yeah. people in Because the, the chapel doesn't fit to no, How many do you have? 96. Yes, okay. yes. So to me, that's and the that's, average age is 65. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, my understanding is no tailgating is allowed. And, and by the way, the size of townspeople may be concerned about how many people are at an event, but nowhere does it say anything about that. The building has a fire code. Yes. That's that's it. Yeah. So you can't make a decision, well, it's okay because, Paul, you don't know how to market, so you only have 20 people, so you can have it there. But somebody who knows how to market is going to have 200 people, you can't have it there. That's not the way it was written. Yeah. What is the rate? What's 175? 200. 200. Uh, yeah, it's, it's somewhere in here, but I, I think it was around 200 or 200 something. I think it really comes down to, you know, I think this board and town administration really willing to allow whatever use we can to use the building and and it comes to how to appease the neighbors uh, the neighborhood that we know what we're doing and, and it's a good group and and it will be a safe event uh, I, I think there's a lot of skepticism in the neighborhood and, and that's probably more the issue than who is there well it depends who in the neighborhood you talk to well right yeah, that, that too. Uh, and, and people that were used to some of these historic uses probably are no longer in, in that neighborhood anymore. So they feel it's a, a new use. It's not historic because they weren't there, I don't know, 20 years ago when Joyce was there or whatever. And, and Fred, you're right that it, 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 it depends upon, and Paul, you're right, it depends upon who you, who you speak with. Yeah. But I bet if you hold the X number of people who voted thumbs up for this plan to renovate Town Hall, they did not vote for this so that a committee or two could meet in that building once in a while. That's mm -hmm. not how you spend one point something million dollars. That is a waste of one point something million dollars. So it's not, so yes, the neighbors are, and they're friends of mine, so I get it. Yeah. But you have to weigh that against the intent that the building was renovated to, for, to promote and further. Okay. But it seems that people aren't in agreement with what this board or town administration feels should be done, so they're going the legal process, I guess. Right. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think it changes what the action I'd like us to take, just to. I'm going to second Joyce's motion, motion, and then uh, obviously Paul can do what he, what he wants, but I'll okay. second the motion. I, I think that there needs to be a, a, an applicant name on here that represents who the sponsor is. If we're going to go with this the way it is, well, uh, I think I, I, I think tonight we can only either approve it or disapprove it as it's written. And if in the future it requires a municipal partner, then that's something to 
do in the future that could be amended. Uh, you could bring in a, a new application with a municipal partner just to help mitigate the risk. Um, but tonight, this is what we have in front of us. Right. And you could do that in the next meeting. You could do that in the next meeting if you wanted to. Yeah. So that's what we got right now. So I, uh, I've heard a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sleep well. Okay. Um, let's get through the. Uh, what's the fiscal 2020? What's we can postpone that. We can. Yeah. That's a that's a presentation that I gave to the finance committee. I also sent it on the yeah. Yeah. I, 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 emails. I I was thumbing through that. That they're very interesting. I will have questions when we go through it. Yes, uh, but it's not. I'm it's yeah. It's okay. It's not time. But I wanted to make sure. Act on this other application, yeah. He, right. Yeah. There's also this other application. Yeah. Um, the reason I I brought this before the board is it, it occurs to me that this is a group who wants to use it for rehearsal. Yeah. But and they want to use it. They said every Wednesday. So I mean, one hundred fifty dollars times. That's going to be an expensive rehearsal. You know, that's a very expensive rehearsal. Is that should we be looking at the policy to adjust some right. cost for rehearsal? Or I mean, even be ten times, it's fifteen hundred dollars. They're not going to use the right. space. Right. I would be more comfortable if the Whitley resident was the applicant. Martha Zorn is yes. not. That was suggested. The resident. So, um, but I, I, I myself would not be in favor of that. I think if the Whitley resident is the applicant, then they are the ones who are going to be responsible. But Peggy Zell is a Whitley resident. I, I know. Right. But she's not the applicant. The applicant name is Martha Zorn. So Peg Zell should fill out the dog on form and be the applicant, be the responsible person, be the one whose name and phone number is going to be called the next day by whoever when something happens. I think they should be the applicant. Right. Not say, oh, we have a Whitley resident in our group, and honest, I'll take care of it. Well, I'd say the Whitley at resident should be the end. This is something I actually asked about back when we were talking about our policy and about, well, how do we quote enforce Whitley resident? Because does the, does the whole group have to be all Whitley residents? Well, no, a group with some Whitley residents would so uh, might still be able to use the facility, but it should be the Whitley resident who applies. And I. I think that's not asking too much. I think that's not too onerous for someone to just come in and say, we have someone on paper who was part of the right. organization. You know, then, you know, you can. Well, then you need to change the, the form here because it says type of applicant. Applicant, it should check Whaley resident. Martha Zorn is not Whaley resident. She didn't feel so. We suggested to her yeah. that we will suggest more forcefully. Right. We suggested so for example, I what would, choices I would move that we deny this application and suggest that if they want to come in under the Whitley resident, that they have a Whitley resident, fine. Right, but it doesn't preclude them from coming in as another. Right, but if they come in as another, another it, it seems like they're, they've indicated that they wouldn't really have enough money to pay for that. If they, that would, uh, oh, sure, we'll approve it for 150 bucks a pop. That's how, we'll, that's how we'll put it. That's how we'll put it. Right, because I, right. Pe the applicant is not a way to I know these guys. These guys use the school on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. they want to move to the school. I, they right, I, okay. which I, I think they, they should just yeah. fill out the form. The right I'm okay with that. Either, so I, I don't know whether it's better to reject it or accept it with the uh, $150. No, just, just, just table it. Or table it. Table it. Or we could. Right. Well, no, let's, we'll, we'll reject it. Yeah. With, okay. with the suggestion that I move that we reject it with the suggestion that they have a Whitley resident actually be the applicant and the responsible person. Second. Okay. And I, I guess the point I like to make it if it's a Whitley resident, that, that's fine. But I like to see something by the name of the group, even here or, or even on Paul's, if it's a nonprofit. What's the name it's of the group? What's the name of the organization? Yeah, they say it down here, but maybe yeah. here. What what is the group that they're sponsoring? So we know it's a viable group, other than uh, Amy's backyard 
rehearsal group. I, I, I don't know. Is it, Maybe. Is, is it a viable group or not, or is it just a... Have you seen her backyard? <laughs> Yeah, it's a dust bowl in the summer. Yeah, she would hardly want to use the town hall. I, I know, but to know what the group is, other than the, na than the name of a resident. Yeah. Well, it, and it is there, but they... It is right, right, it is there, they do say that, but... Uh, and even the, the, for Paul, is, is there a name of his organization or something? Paul it's no I mean, it's, it's a fair point, have the organization yeah. there. The organization yeah. name. If there is one. Yeah. yeah, right. If there, there doesn't have to be one. No, it but the... Just a private event with one person in charge. You can add a lot for organization. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, insurance for a center school. So, I got a quote for the vacant building yeah. policy, and um, that's thirty-five hundred, uh, thirty-six hundred dollars. For the vacant building policy, um, <clears throat> but the net cost because we take it off our uh, standard list about uh, statement of values. So the net cost would be around twenty four hundred dollars. To have That's a lot of money vacancy yeah. for nothing protection on it. Yeah. Um, so what's your point? Point is, we can leave it as on the statement of values and take our chances. Take our chances. Um, or we could go for, um, we, could, we could put on this, we could put it on different policy. My concern with taking our chances, I don't care about the building itself, but liability. If, it, you know, we all know the snow falls off that roof. If, if, if somebody is walking that around there and the snow falls on them, we're not covered. Well, aren't we, regardless of whether we have this policy or not, for that liability? That, that's on any town property. If they walk by the town hall and snow falls on them. Yeah, those buildings are, the buildings oh. are listed, yeah. Then, and so, so the insurance is just if, if it burns. Or vandalism. Or vandalism or floods. I hear water goes through there once in a while. No, I don't think it uh, excludes water damage, flood, earthquake, and theft. It, it really gets into the, the bigger question of what we see as the future of building. Um, if it's going to get knocked down in six months, do, do we really care? Um, are we going to, or if we're going to keep it, well, we may want to keep it in some condition where it's going to be uh, usable. usable. Um, I have said before, and I'll say it again, I think we should put the thing on the market and see what kind of sniffs we get. But it doesn't mean we have to accept the sniff. Right. I mean, we could, we could, we could get the vacant policy for the rest of the fiscal year, which I'm sure won't be a ton of money, and that would give us uh, February, March, April, May. Yeah, it gives us four or five months, months to figure out where the, the meanwhile is protected. And then, this will be a prorated amount, I'm sure, of yeah. 340, whatever that is. That seems pretty Yeah, I think that would be the reasonable okay. thing to, to do it. And I would go with the, the 3,600. I don't think we need the terrorism protection. I, I don't think so. $4 or whatever, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm fine with that, but I, I really do want. I, I still don't see a, an action plan. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't, we don't have an action plan. We don't have an action plan for that building. And and and. Well, how do we come up? With we were kind of waiting at the last meeting for for planning to come up with the zoning changes or zoning uses that would like allow. Yeah. Yeah. And do we want to wait for that or not? Meeting, right? uh, we're the meeting on the twenty sixth. Right. Uh, uh, well, I think we can discuss it. Well, yeah. But the more I think about that, yeah. I'm. I'm should that be done first before we well, put we on a market yeah. or see what we get? And if that person wants whatever they are to see whether zoning is allowed or can be changed, I think you're maybe restricting the number of applicants if you say it should be, say, uh, residential only. Okay. Oh, I think they're going to open it right up. Well, I, 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 I don't well, know. I think maybe they'll know by March what they're going to be put, trying to put up. 
before yeah. town meeting. So we'll have a much better idea in just a few weeks. But, uh, but, but about planning what should potentially be. So, so and anybody who would be sniffing around would want to know potentially what's happening with the zone. So we'll, well, we'll know more than that. You get outside people that are going to be involved until it's on the market to see. Because the planning board alone shouldn't be determining use for that law. Well, zoning is right now. Right, right, now. Oh, right. But, but if we as a select board think that that footprint has some benefit to the town, we should be promoting that as part of the planning board's thought process. Right. But if we're silent on it, then the planning board is, is and they're great people, but they're they don't have they don't have the vision of the town. They just are looking at planning. But, but then it comes how do we get our concerns to that board? I mean, go to one of the meetings. Right. Well I, I guess but it could be several meetings I guess to go yeah. to they're not going to decide and, and, and we and we don't have a unified meeting. plan for that. No we, we, we kicked around a lot of ideas yeah. while uh, people from the planning board were here at our meeting last night. Right. So there's some communication between us and the planning board. Right, right. But but, but we're we're not you like you said, oh they don't have a vision of the town. Well, oh we don't necessarily have no, a but vision for what that particular piece of property is. We have, we have lots of different ideas. Because we don't know what's possible. Because we don't know what's possible. We'll also get a pushback on a spot zone. They're trying to zone all the old buildings in town, which are about five. Right, it's an overlay. Yeah. yeah, and they won't. They may go by square footage. You can put 10 units in this square footage, but only four units in this square footage. But the uses, I think, will all be the same. So why? Because otherwise it's spot zoning. They don't want to do spot zoning. Yeah, but, but, but location, 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 location. Yeah, I'm not saying it won't be in the list of things that can go there, but it'll be the same list as, say, the blue schools. I tried to get spot zoning in, and they crushed me. Right, I just, it's, it's you know, to, to compare the blue school and the center school is apples and oranges. They don't see it that way. Oh. Well, you know, you're, you're talking residential, both are residential areas. And it's a matter of how many units, say, you put in each one, or do you zone it commercial? Both and are residential and units, but, but one of those units. No, they're looking at zoning all of them commercial. That's, well, they that's are. Oh, yeah. Well, Bar, lounge, nightclub, restaurant, uh, multifamily housing. Uh, I think there's another one. I mean, that's what's on the board right, right. now. They have it. Restaurant. Yeah. Restaurant's been there right along. But that's one. Well, okay, I just, you know, the. It, there's a lot of commercial stuff within an easy walk of the center school, and that's not the case for the blue school. I don't disagree. Again, they can both be zoned the same, but five different uses. Right. So you just pick the use. Okay. Uh, if we, don't get, right, then if we don't get 10 units in the next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Uh, sorry, two weeks. Uh, sorry, uh, slightly less than two weeks from now. Okay. So, sure, sure. The day before our next meeting is one of theirs. So we're going to, to get back to the agenda, we're going to extend the coverage prorated through the end of the year. Uh, fiscal year. Should, should we ask the, the planning board to come to our meeting after their meeting on which will be what, well, March 12th to tell us what they're proposing? We can ask. Uh, sure, sure, we can ask. I mean, it gives help. us a chance, plus. But the, the public, yeah. plus the public to see it on TV, what's being proposed. Well, yeah, I know they're meeting with Peggy Scott for a to try to right. talk about some things. So maybe, maybe, we, maybe we, they'll have a direction that they can talk about. Yeah. And maybe they can do it for the 27th because they're meeting for the 26th. Right, for the 27th. Right. So either that or the March 12th or 13th. 
Yeah, so, but I, I think you're right. That's why the nice thing, there's probably a little more need for some, you know, some better communication between the boards, and I think it happens best if like, one person go right. to to that board meeting. And I'll, um, I'll try. I can try to go on the 26th. What, 26, what time is that? Um, uh, let me switch back to that window. Um, well, we it we says their meetings are the last Tuesday of the month at 4 Sandy Lane at 7 p.m. We have a finance committee that day, don't we? Yep, at 5. At 5. So we could just, we could just call in for pizza. Go to the finance committee and then go to the What time is the planning board? It says seven. Unless there's yeah, seven, an exception right. on that particular day, but it says their meetings are the last Tuesday of each month, 7 okay. p.m. for Sandy Lane, where so all the cool kids have been. <coughs> and I've got a scam board of oversight meeting at 6 o'clock that night. They should be busy. Well, it might, well, that might yeah. be mine to do that. I mean, the school right, committee no, meeting, thinking. the crack of eight. The, yeah. the finance committee might be a, a challenge. Yeah, five, ten. Okay. The planning board has nothing on their calendar for that day. That just means they haven't posted it yet. I've had four meetings in one day, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> what are we dealing with? All right. Else, um, okay. So I mean, I'll put it on my calendar to try and go. It sounds like okay. between the three of us, we might well, be in three different there. places. Yeah. And are we inviting them the next day or no? Oh, or is that can, we, can, can you is that float that right? idea to them? Yeah. That uh, uh, we see a need, we'll at least send one person to their meeting. Uh, would they consider sending one person to our meeting? We need 24 hours, 48 hours for agenda, right? Just so put it on there and we can yeah. get out. We can put it again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to discuss the third party inspection report at the transfer station. Just sends a signature from the chairperson. There were no issues. It just needs to be signed. So. Good discussion. And then uh, performance evaluation of the town administrator. Amy uh, has the deposit document, I think. Yeah, I think. So it'll need to be signed or discussed and or discussed. Oh, do I do this packet? Yes, they should. Oh, yeah. Well, it's near the end. Yeah. Jonathan has three X's. Does that mean anything more than one X? I just do three X's. Okay. It's enthusiasm. Okay. Well, so that, that, I'm the one who says meets and not exceeds. I've got this. Well, we've already had some of these. Yeah. Wow. Well, I did put a comment as to what I meant by exceeds. I sort of felt like what I really wanted to call him to say was, meets expectations, but we have really high expectations. And that wasn't available. So I put exceeds expectations. I didn't put a lot of other comments piecemeal throughout, but that I put at the end. Right, and I, and I guess I put meets expectations as opposed to exceeds expectations because he's been on, Brian, I love Brian. <laughs> Right, I, I think but he's been on the job for a year and a half. Uh -huh. yeah. Feels like it. Right, <laughs> feels like forever. And I can't point to one thing that he's done poorly, but I know in my first year and a half as a select board member, I didn't exceed expectations because I'd only been doing it for a year and a half. How long have you been here? I had a lot to figure out. I was joking about one and a half. Oh, okay. like three Two and a half, right? Two and a half. Okay, but I, but again, my first term, I I was fine, but I didn't yeah. knock anybody's socks off. Well, you didn't allow us to evaluate. Right, you did one of these evaluations of us. Every three years, they get evaluated. It's called an election. Oh yeah, election. Yeah. I, I guess I rated him higher because of all the individual projects he's been involved oh, yeah. in here. I, you know, I tried to list some of them, but I don't know if I got them all, yeah. but. You know, we didn't have these before, say, Brian came, or before Mark came, I mean, they were kind of, uh, the last three or four years, we've been into some major stuff. 
Look, we yeah, have to and, challenge ourselves a little bit. Right, and, and I don't even know if his current job description, uh, position description, talks about specific, these kind of activities even. To be contract administrator for all of these. <laughs> right? Sometimes you just get it done. Right. Yeah. Because you look around and there's nobody else, so. Yeah. <laughs> important and stuff gets done. All right, so what do we do here? Are we going through each one of these? No, I don't. I don't yeah, uh, I'm kind of skimming over yeah, here. Yeah, I don't need to. Comments, I'm not finding anything that. Uh, I think if you have one signed copy, that would be appropriate for the most file. We're all agreeing on three. John Collins, Kendall's, is always here. Brian technically have, does the town administrator technically get one for one comp time? Yeah. <clears throat> Informal comp time? Yeah. Rarely taken, but in theory, available. I don't, I find it hard to use all my leave time. Right. How much vacation did you yeah. lose last year? How many how much vacation do you get? I forget. Three. You get three. You started with three, right? Yeah. Well, clearly we can give him more because he won't take it. It carries over, yeah. Stack, right. stack, stack it up. Well, I, I'm you a don't big believer in the no vacation so. policy. I'm a big believer in the no vacation we'll policy. Give you eight weeks. Take what you get. Take what you need. Yeah. Eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. So you can use one. Eight weeks and you can only carry over All two right. at the end of the first well, week. So. And unless anyone has a, looking at the clock, unless somebody has a, um, an overriding need to discuss this further. I, I think that we accept this evaluation, understanding that we all are very happy with Brian and that um, the individual differences are subjective in terms of how you read one of these documents, if nothing else. Right. Um, so, and, and then as we agreed before, I'll go into negotiation with Brian about his next contract and then bring it to you guys for discussion and approval, which we would do. So do we need to vote to authorize that or didn't we authorize that? Last I think we authorized it already. We were going to talk ourselves about what your contract negotiation should be with parameters. Right, right. yes. There's an executive session on the agenda. Executive session. Oh, there is one, yeah. yeah. After sparkling time administrator updates. I, I guess, you sure you want to do those with the discussion we're about to have? Oh, yeah. Let me see if the good ones are There's only got one update. What, one, yes, right. one thing that's kind of related to Brian's performance here and all, and you know, we've hired Amy, well, and even that position has been, what, past year, two years? We've had an assistant? Yeah, two-ish. Two-ish, and, and you're limited to what, 18 hours? 24. 24 hours. Is there any discussion or, of of extending them hours? Um, well, my understanding possibly. is that there's a possibility the personnel committee is uh, thinking about considering uh, which more than, not so much increasing hours, but shifting them so that it's increased during the budget season, right? When we really have so many meetings going on that sometimes day-to-day -day work could get dropped. Uh, and then when it's not the budget season, then you go back to regular hours. So. Just to kind of have that have that position be one where there's more hours during certain times of the year, but that's not been adopted yet. That's been it's up for discussion though. So yeah. yeah, I still need to formalize that. Or, or need for say four more hours every every week. 
on top of what she's doing today or something and just you just right, want yeah. that. So yeah, and I don't know if the number would be four. Well, but I'm just it, throwing but it out. It's, so, yeah, but four more hours a week between February 1st and uh, May 1st were to be thought of. And we we're thinking in those terms. Not necessarily just a, a blanket raise in the hours because that doesn't, that doesn't address the uh, the unevenness of the, the load because the load is a lot about the meetings well, and there are more meetings in the budget season. Right, but it also comes down to what else Amy is doing for Brian that maybe we're not aware of on a daily basis. Uh, you know, right, we're not assessing Amy though, right? No, no okay. uh, but to help That's Brian, I, I guess <laughs> it kind of relates to Brian's performance. Yeah. And, oh, and, and, and if we're at, I guess maybe I, I'd like to see something from Brian uh, what he thinks if more hours should be assigned to Amy to have that available to personnel to consider rather than just yeah. saying during budget season you need so many more. I think I like to hear from Brian. He's the one that knows what she does and doesn't do and what he what she could do more of to help them. Yeah. Uh, I do have that on, yeah. on okay. the short to do list well, before but, the personnel came in. And, and, and maybe I'm naive or ignorant of, of, of conversation that's taking place, but I think it's also important to know whether Amy is interested in additional hours because of her family situation. I mean, uh, we don't. Yeah, right. So, and maybe that's not yeah. for discussion here because we're getting into the weeds, but let's balance our needs with 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 the, the, the work, the, the, the work-life balance that right. the employee has as well. Well, like I said, leave it up to Brian. Yeah, yeah. conversation. Okay, what's your update? Yes, okay. Uh, updates. Um, Commonwealth approved our community compact application for the for Cog County. So hopefully we should have an accountant fairly soon. Uh, bids for the sprinkler repair at the elementary school are due February 22nd. One issue that's going to be coming in front of the board is the Poplar Hill Road layout extension that I guess has been going on for a long time between Mr. Creasy and Smith and Stone Walls and who owns what. Um, Smith and Mr. Creasy are preparing a road acceptance plan, um, which would allow, assuming the select board wants to do it, he's been working with, with these guys, I've met with them a couple of times, would allow the um, relay out of that road up to um, the Smith College Park. Um, it would address a lot of issues for our resident who has liability issues with um, uh, right. people from going to and from Smith, as well, vice versa. Um, and it cleared up, and our town trucks have really nowhere to turn around um, where the road ends now. So that plan will be moving forward. We'll come to the board to go through the same process that we did with Pine Plains Estates. Yep. Okay. And any mileage increases are Chapter 90 allocation, so um, that's always good. Even if it's just a little fraction of a mile. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to update that. And there's been some talk about, about and nothing's been formalized yet, but whether Smith College will be willing to make a donation for, for the paving of that road, for the paving ends now up to the driveway, up to their parking lot. Um, but we'll try to finalize that um, in the next coming weeks. And then lastly, um, we had our first meeting. I was, it's the first meeting since I've been here with our, we have a safety risk, uh, risk manager from, from our insurance company. Um, she met with uh, myself and well, the, most of the department heads were able to make it. Um, we started the conversation about workplace safety. Um, OSHA regulations, OSHA standards are now being applied to municipalities, whereas um, in the past there were state standards that apply. Um, and those are going to be enforced by the Department of Labor Services, which did enforcement previously. Um, so really all towns are trying to feel their way through what is required and what are the costs. Um, there's going to be additional training that's required. There might be some additional purchases of um, uh, PPE, personal, uh, personal protective equipment. Um, but nobody has a real good idea of what that is. So um, we're going to try to meet on a quarterly basis with her and find our path forward um, to 
so that we become more compliant with OSHA, um, you know, over, uh, over time. Um, it's not all going to happen at once. Um, and DLS understands that. And they expect it to be a, a multi-year process of town catching up to the new standards. But um, they will be, we've been told, I've, I've gone to several of these session, training sessions, and one of them was at the MMA conference um, in Boston. Um, DOS takes the, takes the position that if there's an accident or something happens, they're not going to come in and find the town immediately. It's going to be, they're going to issue a corrective order, give the town a period of time to come into compliance, and then there wouldn't be any monetary penalties. So their goal is workplace safety, not revenue generation. But it's, it's, it's something we may see once in a while in terms of in, in people's budgets, we may see line items for equipment that we'll probably have to purchase. Some training, additional training that will have there. That's about it. Um, I'm a, I have a question. Where do we stand on the conversation around having someone on staff or some capacity within town to assess building needs, maintenance, that kind of thing, so that we're not overseeing buildings that are essentially potentially going to become money pits? I was, we talked about that. We um, did, but I don't remember. As the, we, if we have a, a building superintendent, it might be kind of folded in with the highway superintendent, so right. highway and building superintendent. So having some kind of a custodian uh, who would actually do kind of a lot of the everyday kind of work, but working with Keith, who would be, uh, you know, if you expand his job a little bit, uh, it would be to um, kind of assess our buildings for what they need for maintenance going forward. So, but that's a budget issue, I guess, is my question. So what, what's happening? Yeah, so I'm going to be putting together a, it's a, it's a budget and it's a job description issue. But it really goes back to the personnel committee meeting. I'm going to put together a proposal. Um, I'll go to the personnel committee first and then we'll come to the board with a recommendation, yes or no, of the personnel committee. Be because we have somebody on payroll currently in this town that's only working part-time and has potentially those kinds of skills. Who so, is? Wayne. Oh, for the water department? Yeah. So I, I just don't want to, it may not be as monumental a task as we're laying it out to be. And I don't know whether there would be interest there or what, but. The, the other thing that, that's happening with this is, you know, Brian has been successful in reorganizing the capital improvement planning committee. And we went from one meeting to, what, three this year. And part of them, one of the meetings was to visit each of the town buildings yep. with the department head and to show us what needed to be improved either today or in the future. And, and I, I guess we, you know, we've got Nicholas Jones on that committee who's familiar with, with building construction. So uh, even though, so he did. He did help us on that. But but each of the department heads was was familiar with with their building. What needed to be done. What was failing, and, and how long maybe it would last. Uh, because looking at looking at the buildings we have, you know, we're getting rid of the old timers. The, the supposedly center school, the blue school, uh, and town hall is fairly new, but. The fire station, police station, library, well, are in fairly good shape. They've been been having projects right along, and I I think I feel comfortable that department heads know what's going on in their building, uh, and we have these other people going on uh, inspections of the building to, to verify that. We even went to the school and met with the school board, some of the school committee to, to look at the, at the school itself. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. So I think as far as identifying needs, I, I, I think we can do that with department heads. It's a matter of 
the next step is is developing a plan on say when do you replace some of these future needs and and to do that i guess you either go by age or or, or condition of the element you're looking at and i don't think we need to necessarily hire anybody to tell us that i think these department heads know that pretty much or we can figure that out the committee can figure that out all, all due respect i'm not sure that and, and nicholas is great but nicholas might not always be on that committee and there no. may not always be that skill set and <clears throat> and people who are in charge of buildings brian is in charge of this building in theory brian doesn't necessarily have that that skill set or that knowledge or if 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 something needs to be fixed having someone who can fix it so that it, it's, it stems a tide as opposed to just dragging on and dragging on and dragging on. And, and, and so while Nicholas has that, that experience and that skill set, and certainly much better than I do, there are a lot of, there, having consistency with someone who can, who can assess and fix quickly so that we are spending short money to prevent having to spend long money is an investment not unlike preventive health, preventable health care. Right. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Jonathan, but, and, and whether you have our, our part-timers or you, our one part-time person or Keith or somebody else, else do it, to me that, you know, that's a person that's gonna, it, it's a key real person in, in doing all of this as a key role that we don't have today. So if we add that to either position, yeah, that would be a big benefit. And, and I think we should start with that approach and see what we get. Uh, yeah, if Brian recognizes something that needs to be done here, I, I mean, if, if we know somebody that's helped us in the past to address, say, HVAC units, HVAC issues or plumbing issues, whatever, then whoever our contact is for building maintenance, would, would deal with that person rather than Brian direct the way it's happening now. But, but Brian's job is not to run around this building on a regular basis to figure out, to, to make sure that nothing no. is, that nothing's that, uh, breaking down or about to break down. This person's job would be to constantly monitor the status and the, and the, and the, the, the status of, of, our, of our various facilities so that we are making wise and, and preventive decisions as opposed to always reacting. Brian can react, right. but that's, that can be very expensive. Right, well, I, and, and, and yeah, I understand what you're saying, and, and either of these positions we're talking about, maybe they could do that. And so that's what I'm suggesting, that, that and it's not a full-time job, it's, it's, no. it's, it's a band, yeah. not a band. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an additional responsibility yeah, of some show. people yeah. who we already Right, 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 with perhaps extra hours. Right, extra yeah. hours. right. So, and I think we really need to go in that in, the, in that direction, so that we don't have the problem that we had at the center school. It's, someone's going to be monitoring, right. and no one has the time to monitor right now. They react, and we have to be well, they we, we told to monitor. Well, well that's that's, that's told. my point because they don't, have, but they don't have time. So, right. I just want to put that in there, but I also want to um, so uh, adjourn to go into executive session. So, just about one note. If we did that to add hours to one of these positions, would that have to go through personnel to I think so. Change I think that's exactly what personnel wants to take up. Like what change might be appropriate. Because if you're adding somebody's job description, then. So that's on your agenda to, to look at We that. Have, I was just looking it up. We've got the a meeting on the 21st. Okay. Which is a little more than a week away. Okay. Uh, and uh, so actually, after this meeting, Brian and I are going to sit down and find the time to talk about all these kind of these kind of there's a few big things on the plate of the okay. personnel committee yeah. so. okay yeah, i'm glad i brought that up it's very timely okay that being said we we're going to do it in secret no <laughs> that being said i would like to move to adjourn so that we can go to an executive session i don't know whether that's the right line. you got to you should read the uh i don't think so. It's, in the, it's on the agenda. Well, I'm going to executive session, um, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with non union, union personnel. The board will not be returning to open session. And you need to take a roll call hold. All those in favor? Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Me? Yes. That's all she wrote.